and good morning slash afternoon and welcome to Yarn Lane. So um, I'm really lucky today that John has allowed me to do this hour. So he did Sewing Street, but I said, oh, please, can I do Yarn Lane? So he's let me. So the reason is I've been really excited about this show. I've had so many messages from you when we've been selling hanks of yarn and balls of yarn. People saying, how do I knit from a hank of yarn? And we've gone through the whole sort of you put your hands like that and you get a kind child to wind it off for you. Or you say, I use a ball of yarn and it all gets knotted up and I don't know what to do. But there is this fantastic thing called a swift. And a swift will solve all of your problems. So to start with, because I want you to um, show you how to buy these, because this is all about yarn winding and you need to see how you can buy them. If you go on to the website, www.yarnlane.com, click on watch live. And if you scroll down below, as you can see, these are all the products that we've got on air today. So we've got loads of hanks of yarn for you and balls of yarn and pom-pom makers. All of, there it is, all there you can see. So it's See, in the picture there, there's three. You only get one. It's just a nice photo. It's just so we don't confuse you. We've got lots of, lots of really beautiful hand-dyed and hand-spun yarn. Um, but we've also got all of the products I'm going to be showing you and the pom-pom makers and the ball winders and the swift and everything. So that's the, that's the admin part out of the way. So the first thing that we're going to talk to you about is the swift. Now, I've only got the box because Wendy's got the actual swift. So this is the box. Which is, which is just an exciting thing to get you started. So that's what it looks like. Now, this is quite a heavy thing, but remember, there's only one P&P a day, 3 95 Doesn't matter how much you buy, you will only be charged 3 95 So we're going to be starting off with the Swift, which Wendy will demonstrate. I've only got the box because we're not allowed to swap over. The next thing that we're going to show you is this beautiful... Oh, look, there's the picture of the Swift. So this beautiful piece of equipment, which is a ball winder. Honestly, it's amazing. We are really limited in stock of this because I could only get a few, but it's just amazing. Oh, I was just having a little go of it. It's the best thing. Now, the great thing about ball winders, as we'll show you, is that you can wind a hank from the Swift onto this or from someone's hands. But not only that, you can rewind your balls of wool. It doesn't have to be hanks of wool. It doesn't have to be natural hand dye posh hanks. It could just be your normal acrylic balls of yarn that you've got. And you know how you never know whether to start from the inside or the outside, and then it rolls across the carpet and it all gets tangled up. If you pre-wind all your balls of wool, oh, they just come out as little cakes, which Wendy will show you. In fact, I've got one little one here. Let me show you a baby cake. Let me show you a baby cake. That's just 25 grams. If you wind your yarn using one of these ball winders, that's what you get. So you knit with it, it just sits still and you can and knit with it, it's lovely. I always really, really want one of these so I can go home, wind all my balls and put them on the shelf because it's just beautiful, isn't it? And we've got some of these all pre-wound for you later on in the show. Now, this beautiful ball winder, we've only got four left of. So if you want one of these, I know they're 87 99 but they are fantastic. They're made of natural beech wood. Um, everything is in here. The only thing that could possibly go wrong with it is the band that you use on here can perish with time, but you can buy replacements. It's all fine and they're really, really um, inexpensive, the replacements. So there's a picture now of the ball winder and the swift. And Wendy's got that on her set and she's going to show you how it works. And these are by Knit Pro. Now, Nip, if you know um, anything about sort of knitting needles and hooks and accessories, you know that we stock a lot of Knit Pro. When I was choosing what to put on, what sh products we should have, I chose Knit Pro because they're really, really good quality. They've got a long heritage. This is what they do. So I love these. Um, but also, so you can use this, which is beautiful, and Wendy will show it to you in a minute, but there's another item you can use that's a little bit cheaper, which is the Knit Pro, Pro Wool Winder. This is it here, looks a bit odd, but Wendy's going to show you how to use this. This will wind your yarn as well. It's, um, you can't, you can use the knot, you can wind your four ply, your double knit on this, but if you've got heavier weight yarn or twine or lots of yarn, you'll need the wooden one. But for normal double knit, 
this one that you can see on screen at the moment you can use and Wendy's going to demonstrate that one for you as well. So this is your whole wool winding thing. If you've got hanks, you need a swift. If you want really super speedy or heavyweight yarn, you need the ball winder or you can use this, the Nipro wool winder. So we've got loads of hanks of yarn and pom-poms and all sorts of things today, but I'm going to start with winding yarn because I want this to be, I mean, you know, we, um, we've got the products for you, but I want you to learn, so this is fantastic. Once I worked out how you do it, it I was just mesmerized. So I think you'll really enjoy seeing and what you can do and the make quite a difference to your knitting. Morning, Wendy. Good morning. How excited are we? I've been so excited. As soon as you sent me all the stuff for this, <laughs> I have been super excited. <laughs> so show us what, get. so you've got your Swift out of the box. What yeah, happens next? As you said, next? the Swift is to, to wind your skeins and your hanks. Um, and it's, it's literally an like an umbrella. So you can go from smaller right up to bigger. Wow. So it's adjustable, which is the great right. thing about this. And then all you need to do to actually get this started is you have your, your hank of wool and you undo it. So do you have to put it on the table first? I, I did. I've done it both ways. Okay. It is easier to put it on the table. I will, I didn't want to put, cause I've already got one set up. Right. Okay. Um, so all we do, and it's, it's really, really simple to work. It literally is like an umbrella and you'll see here, and this, I'm glad that you've got this one out because this literally is, is how it comes. So it will come like that. Just two pieces. In the box. And all you need to do, and I suspect this already isn't in because um, in just in case it snaps, it's not going to. It's very, very sturdy. But you just need to insert that one in yourself. And all this is, like when you have an umbrella and you put it, put it up and it clicks into place, that's all this does. So and this is going to last a lifetime, isn't Absolutely. it? This is one-off purchase. It's an incredible quality. And then when you get it to where you want it, you just tighten this up and then it stops where it is. Right. So, you, so that's oh, how, okay. So that's how you can determine whether you have a big hank or a little hank. You just push that and up and, and wind you it wind on. it up. Okay. So yes, you're absolutely right. It is much better. So let me pop it down. I just put it down. And then all you do, this section here, you just unscrew and this is right, right out of the box. So this is how you will get yours. And you just, sorry, I don't want to make a noise. You just undo it. I'm trying to do without making a noise. Let me do it away from the table. <laughs> without all clanking on the <laughs> it's table. It's all clanking, isn't it? It's incredible. It looks quality. so lovely. In fact, if I had one of these, I'd keep it on my table. Because you, uh, oh, you look like, like a real professional, don't you? And and look at me with it, my Swift. And the engineering on it, it's I'm just, just mesmerised. It is beautiful. beautiful. And then I all love you would it. do, you would put it up to the side of your table. You would offer it up and then you would screw it up and tighten it. So you need to make sure it's tight. Right. And then, so I'm just going to do that one with this. So I'm going to put the other one on in a moment. Okay. And then, yes, you would take your, your hank of wool and you would undo it. Because the problem is, if you knit from a hank, straight from the hank, it will tangle. It's impossible. And you think it won't, and you get a little bit far, and you end up with this big bird's nest. And I have to be honest, a lot of time, the hanks of yarn are usually the more expensive yarn, aren't they? And you don't They're want to be getting nice yarn. You don't yeah, want to waste sort of them. Natural wool, your hand mm. dyed, the light, and you really don't want to be wasting Absolutely it. Absolutely not. And I have oh memories because my mum, you know, she won awards for her knitting. She was an incredible knitter, my mum. But I'm young enough to remember the standing there, like, Mum, come on, and my arms <laughs> would be aching. She and should have had me. a Swift. She definitely should have had a Swift. <laughs> or you put them on the back of a chair, don't you? Oh, we had that as well. Mm. We had the chair, but yeah, mm. more often than not, it was me because the chair didn't move. Mm. But I did, so I was able to, as um, the wall went round, it's much easier to do it on your arms. But yeah. So this would have been amazing. And then all you do, you just unwrap, and I'm not going to actually untie this because I've got one prepared, but you would untie the knot. Right. And then as you untie it, you will see one of, the, one of them will naturally want to fall down and come away. Right. And one will be more inside. The one inside you don't want to touch. It's the one that naturally falls and hangs away okay. that you want to start with because if you start with the inner one and try and wind it's going to get caught okay so you want that so it's one, the one that's sort of naturally one on the of them outside. will naturally yeah. just like fall away from the, the, mm. the hank and that's what you actually want so um I, I will put that back later <laughs> but i have got one so i'm just going to put it so that's it clamp it to the table and there's, clamp it and the there's table. here's one that wendy did so I've earlier got my little umbrella I've got oh. my little umbrella already set up. It looks up. amazing, doesn't it? It's fantastic. They are brilliant. And all I'm going to do is put it What's against... What's that little knob on the top for? That's for the winding. Oh. It's 
it's fantastic, isn't it? The engineering on this is yeah. incredible. So you clamp it on the table, you put your your hank on, and then you yes. clamp. So you what you do would do, you would put it on the table, and you would have it fairly close. So you'd, I don't, I, I will untake it down a little bit, but you'd have it so that you could just drape the hank over right. it, and then you would pull it up to tighten it because you don't want the hank to be all loose, too loose around it. Right. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, and then that's the job done. Okay. That's it. That's it. But, and I, I have got um, one of these, not one of these winders, one of those winders. One of the wool winders. But it's not one of those winders, it's a different make. Um, and I must have wound over 300 balls of wool. Now, people would actually say, why do you need to wind wool from a mm. ball of wool? Yeah, why do you? Yeah, well, why? Yeah, that's a very good question. Because what you create are cakes, and they're called um, yarn cakes. Now, if ever you pull, try and pull your ball of wool out from the centre, believe me, it never works. You're mm. lucky if you can find the centre and pull it out. That's the best way to knit, because then the ball is static. Yes. Otherwise, you take it from the outside and it's bouncing around all oh, over the place. Oh, it's all over there, yeah, then the cat gets flat. it, or the dog. Oh, yes. And it, yeah. But with this one, if you're working from cakes, and I tend to work, I mean, I've worked up to seven strands and above when I work, um, you can have all your cakes sat on the floor. Brilliant if you're doing fair isle as well, and you're doing yes. you're different colours yes. at the same time. And then as you... See how easy that just pulls oh. away. And they don't go anywhere at oh, all. Oh, and that's just normal... A and this is just wool. acrylic wool, this right. one is. Um, so people say, well, why would you want to wind your balls of wool into cakes? And for that very reason, it's completely static. It's not going anywhere. And I, I design and do corner-to-corner -corner crochet. Mm. Um, and sometimes you have quite a lot of balls of wool. I tend to wind them on the little bobbins, but sometimes I'm a bit lazy and don't. And then the balls just Yeah, I know, everywhere. they do go all over the place. Um, yeah, so that's why it's a good idea to and wind And then with them. the swift... Yeah, you really, if you're working with Hanks, you do need a Swift. It was Or someone that's prepared to stand there for which, hours. And yeah, it's, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not in this day no. and age, is it? Um, so that, that was genius. When I saw that, that was the thing I was most excited yeah, about. Because it, yeah, it is a game changer, isn't it? Completely. And I'm finding now, since we've been, um, I mean, I've been knitting for years, but also since I've been buying wool, more and more wool comes on hanks. I think because there's much more of a cottage industry going on. There's a lot more people doing their own yarn, spinning it and, and dyeing it as well. Oh, we've and got a message from it Linda. It so lovely. Nice message from Linda. I've always wondered what the Swift was for. Mm. It's a must-have. I always wrap my skeins over my knees and then hand Ooh, rolled it. Oh, that's a new one. I've never mm. seen over the knees. There you go. But it is a game changer. Oh, I couldn't sit still long enough to do that. But it, yeah. it is absolutely. And I, I did that this morning and it stayed on there. So if it was at home with me, it would literally be in my on my side all the time. I would mm. have it on. And the little one that you've got, I, as I say, I have a version of that. That's up all the time. As soon as I okay. get a ball of wool... I just go to it and I wind it and then um, it's there ready for me next time. Mm. But with this one, this is the Rolls Royce. Okay. I have never, I, as I say, I love Good. like all the technical things and all the machinery. This is incredible, right. this one. So this is about to sell out, but, no. I, st <laughs> but I still want you to show it. Okay then. Because right. <gasps> it is. Oh. So you will get it out of the box. It will come like this. So this is the band that you were talking about. This is the only thing, and I've looked this all over. This is the only thing that I can ever see. So it is a once in a lifetime purchase. I would say so it? personally. And the Swift as well. Once yes. you've got these once two. Once you've got them, if you look after them, yeah. um, then yes. Because with rubber, you're always it's always going to perish whether mm. it takes one year 10 years 20 years it does have a life expectancy but the rest of the moving parts i can't see if you looked after no it. and i and i had it because we don't sell the replacement bands on the website yet but yet. you know we yet. might but i had a quick look online you can get them from various places you can get two bands for about seven pounds so it's good. not much yes it's really good you know and it's going to take you quite some time oh absolutely but they are if you do if your band does perish after a few years you can get replacement ones and I guess the only other thing that, rather than perish, it may stretch. Yeah. Because uh, I, I have pushed this little thing, well, mm -hmm. it's not little, it's substantial. I've pushed this to its limits. So I've wound three balls of wool together into a triple cake. So I've had three wow. strands in one cake. And anyone that knows me will know that I am a, I work with jute, garden twine. Mm. That's one of my mediums that I work all the time <gasps> so with. So nice to crochet with, isn't it? I l it's bit hard on the hands but I love the effect when you makes. make like a, a string bag yes all that sort of table thing. mats and all things Beautiful. like that 
but um, because they come wound on as like a ball of string, mm. they're all curly. So the first thing I need to do is wind it into a cake. And the little one has struggled and said, whoa, mm. this one, it was like, yeah, come on, give me Off more, bring in. And so the, the ball winder is fine for your four ply lace weight double knit and chunky? I would, I would not say chunky i would definitely say you probably do mm. aaron but of course and you'll see in a moment when we get that one out it's all yeah. to do with how wide you can go here and as you can see the the width between here is massive right okay. so this is how you'll get it out when you get it home and all you need to do first of all is you just need to engage the belt and you just pop it on one end and then you pop it over the other end and it will go in, I should put it the other way around. It will go in that little groove there. So now you'll see that when I turn the <laughs> handle, it starts moving. Lovely. And listen. Can't hear you can't anything. Hear it. It's so smooth. So now we can attach. Well, first of all, we have to attach it to the desk. Oh, right. Otherwise yes, it's or go it will flying. fall off. Now, I will just warn people out there. I, I got very, very excited when I saw this, and I did go at 90 miles an hour. And my ball flew off. So don't go at 90, 90 miles, miles an hour. I, just I did that just now and it fell off the table and Wendy said I haven't actually clamped it on. You haven't clamped it on. So, so do so clamp. Please your, clamp it on. Your ball winder. And it's, it's literally, it is a clamp. So you undo it as wide as your work surface goes. Now this is quite a fat work Yeah, well this surface. is like kitchen work it surface, is, isn't, isn't it? it? And I'm just putting it on there and it goes So if you haven't got the right sort of table, use your kitchen work surface. Because <laughs> this that's what this is. And then all we do is just tighten it up. So I'm just tightening. And the good thing I like about this one, it's a really nice, uh, I can't think what the word is. It's not a screw. The Clamp. Thing that, the thing that you actually turn yeah. is really big, which means okay. those that have um, dexterity problems. So it's easy it's, it's enough easier. to put on. So now we started that on its way, and it's not going anywhere. Mm. It's absolutely solid. And this but, is why you need the Swift. Yeah. This is, we now need these two yeah, to talk to each other. we definitely need the Swift. So we get our, um, we get to the end, the one that just, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I think you'd struggle to get someone to agree to do this for any length of time. Honestly, I was always moaning. It's like, Mum, please. And then in the end, she'd also, get the Also, you'll get out. a better tension by using the Swift That's exactly well. what I was going to say, because, you know, you know what I'm like. I'm a bit of a dolly daydream. Mm. My hands will be like this once and then like that. Mm. So this gives you that, that perfect right. tension. And then all we're going to do, you've got your upright here. So you have the, the, um, the tail and you put the working yarn against that and then you just twist it round. So I'll show that again. I don't know if they can actually pick this up on because we can't get to the overhead. But all you're looking to do is having that three flowing. But all the instructions there. are in the box anyway. Yeah. Oh that's a good yes. Yeah. So that's what you want. You just want that three flowing. You don't want it to be caught around here because otherwise it's not yeah. gonna pull. And then all we're going to do now this is a little bit um, because this is designed for every single, most mediums, mm. it's quite th uh, thick, the groove here. So I'm just doubling up. And I mean, you could maybe even just put it right. a few strands. Because what you're going to do, as soon as you start turning this handle, these two are going, I'm just going to hold it because it is very just thin. Just to get it started. Just to get it started. So I'm just going to twist these around. And then these two start talking to each other. So as this, now you would, because I'm working in a smaller space, mm. you would naturally have them have a, a little, little bit yeah. wider because you can see that it's, it's kind of, it needs to be free flowing. And then all we that's do. That's beautiful, isn't it? Carry on. Just beautiful. I could be here all day doing Oh, it. I know. That's just lovely, isn't this, it? It's just one so, of those. So when you've bought your beautiful hank of yarn. It's I'm actually, this is actually quite a pleasurable part of the process, isn't it? You know how you go on oh, the yeah. ball winding, yeah. lovely. And um, I put my music on, or mm. I have my headphones in if I don't want to um, annoy anyone. Which you know, I know it actually looks really professional, doesn't it? Like, yeah, look, look at me, look, look at me and my equipment. <laughs> but, and and just they look so pretty, even if you've just got them set up. <laughs> well, right they are. On but the and what's lovely is they're both made from natural beech wood. They're both by Knit Pro, so they go together. They're absolutely And these things useful. are important, aren't they? I think so personally. I think, so. I think they need to match. But um, so you just keep going. And going and I don't want to go too fast because I as I say you do need to be a bit further away because as you can see the wall is coming down and it's not catching but yeah. I don't want it to catch it anyway but because I have started with the end that just flew out of the skein 
then I'm not going to get caught up. Yeah. If, I'd have, if I'd have started, there's a little one hanging down here. If I'd started with that on the inside, it wouldn't have wound right. so nice. Okay. So just be, please don't tell me they're sold out because I want one of these. Please don't tell me. <laughs> I please think they nearly have. Rebecca. And then we just keep going. Yes. Okay. So can we show the wool winder I'm now? I'm not playing anymore, that's fine. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> because then we can show how the Swift and the wool winder right. work together. Right, so yes. Obviously, I'm always going to say, if you gave me a choice, mm. I would yeah. want this one. But this will work with that as well. Right, OK. Um, so that's all you would need to do to that. And then to release the ball, and you don't have to. I don't have to do all of that. If I just wanted a little bit of, of yarn, then I could so just So again, like it. if you were doing fair isle or something, you want just a little ball, you could wind just a small... Definitely. And just leave that mm. as it is. And then all you need to do to take it off you need to release the bit that you fault you put in at the beginning and just pull it up and then you have a little oh cake. that's so lovely you have a little that's so satisfying <laughs> that is so satisfying and it looks lovely doesn't it it's all, all we're getting a nice close-up yeah that is so so satisfying and then you can see now you have the center and then you and can you just, knit from the center <laughs> you just keep wow so when everyone has checked out there are only two of oh. the ball winders left and they are... I am not surprised. They are beautiful. They, this That's one for me and one for you, then. Oh, yes. <laughs> no more, please. Um, I think that um, people would go, it's just a ball winder. If you, if you knit yeah. and crochet a lot and you use a lot of wool and yarn, you know that mm. the, the worst thing you can have is trying to get the centre out. That's the first thing that drives me crazy. And also having the ball bouncing around. So to make the case. So then and it's lovely, isn't it, that it's not electric yeah isn't it it's just you and you can go quite fast and you know I, i'm talking mm. about i literally just so. i pushed it to its limits to see and then all you would do is you would just then release this band down so yeah, when important. you finished when you finish working with it just release that down i'm not saying if you were to leave it up for a day or a couple no, of days no it just keeps but stops it when not in tension. use it, yeah because um if you're going to be using right really thick wool you're making it work harder which is going so to this one is about to sell out so oh, if you do want okay. it you need to put it in your basket but don't worry we do have the wool winder which is also by knit pro so when i was looking at buying that there are different wool winders and ball winders you can get so you know i'm quite keen on if you're going to buy something buy quality but we've offered you two different options so you've got the high-end beautiful quality beechwood but this wool winder of all the wool winders is very good quality um i have one at home and it's not a patch on this Really? Uh, yes, so um, I'm going to be ditching that one. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> it has wound over a Yeah, but this of is, of all the wood. But of all, and um, you know, with this one, I would say that it would last years and years and years and years. All that you're going to need to do mm. is replace the band. Yeah. Um, and again, that depends on a lot of things. But with this, so how do we get it on the table right, then? Right, so I have, this is how I've got it. It's just come out of the box. And so it is beautiful, and it is, yeah, it's very, I mean, it's very sturdy. It's great quality. I tell you what I liked about this one that not um, my other one at home, this is already in there. Oh, okay, so yes. So my one isn't, and, and I've lost it a couple of times. Right. So this one you're not going there to lose. Go. So you can't now, would you just table. be able to turn the handle for me on that one? Because my handle needed... Oh, no, yours is fine. It needed cranking first. So okay. So it may be that you just need to, like, uh, wind it right. before you use it. And then you'll find that you've got that, but at the moment we've got nothing for the wall to wind on. So you also get your little... Your little... Um, Funnel. 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 That's yeah, I wondered what that was. Funnel. And then all it does is that you put it inside and you'll see that there's two grooves either side yeah. and two grooves on the funnel. So you just pop it in and then you twist it. Okay. So I've twisted it to the, that way. Right. Um, and then now that's, and that's solid. that's solid. Now, mine's up all the time. So, but it comes in the box so you can store it in there, which but is quite yes, a nice size, it's, isn't it? It's got the box. Now, to put it back in the box, I did try, but you can't put it in the box with the so funnel So you need up. to take the funnel off the or whatever it's called. The only thing that you need to um, be aware of is that you have the bit where the wall actually winds into. That is movable. Right. So that isn't static. So all you need to do is you need to clip it, and you'll hear it, clip in. Yep, got that. So that's all you need to do. And then you need to this open... This is great. I'm learning that. I'm going to get oh, one of these. Oh, brilliant. I've and had a go of the other one. I'm not had a go of this one. But I know... I, it's but exactly the same. I made Wendy have a go of them first. I'm, I bought one of each and said, right, Wendy, have a go. What do you think? I said, because I'm not going to sell these to everybody unless oh. they're good. Oh, these I are I hate brilliant. wasting money on rubbish equipment. Yes. And then all you do is exactly the same, Rebecca. You just offer it up to your worktop. 
Yeah. And then, and they do go wide. You can see these are really fat work tops, and they work on those. Yeah, it does say. Does I? Th I'm, I remember does when it I was writing it. It does I, I say because I, I wrote that. when I was writing the description. It says what size work surface. And then you can see surface. when if I pull it. And it does come with instructions. So yes. You don't have to remember all of this. But I promise you, Rebecca, once you've got it up on your side, once you've done it once. So it goes up to a two inch thickness, which is two quite inch, good. brilliant. Um, the, as I say, the only thing that you need to do is make sure you clip that rod in, this one here, before you offer it to your work. You can put it in, but it means that you'll be forcing it in, and I'd rather you didn't do that. Right. So just clip that in first. Okay. And this is exactly the same principle. So all we need to do, and I would normally have it round the other way. I'd have it set up different because you want you want the um, the yarn to be coming from the so side. So you can either attach this now to your swift if you've got a hank or to your ball if you've yes, got a ball. Right. Yes, exactly. So I'm just going to show you. I'm just There's I'm, the swift. Because I'm doing it backwards, Rebecca. Yeah, so I would want that. Um, right, I'd put it on the side over there. So it's exactly the same principle. You place it along the top. Now what I am going to do is I'm just going to hold that until it gets going because this is quite thin so it's already it's already caught. So I'm just going to cut that end off and then the only other thing I would say is whichever way you start winding because I'm a lefty and you're a righty yeah. and you tried to do it after I did it didn't you <laughs> and you started winding the other way. I did I started so winding the wrong way. <laughs> and so there we go. That's lovely. So for a hank, you need to do it because it winds it up because you can't knit from a hank. You have to. But for a ball, it's to keep it still so you can knit from the middle. It's to make that cake. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with using balls of wool. There's no. absolutely nothing wrong with using that. But um, we all know they roll across the floor. And th they do. And when you've got more than one colour, um, and as I say, I work with lots of strands at a time it's when I do. It's satisfying, isn't it's it, the way it goes? Nice, nice. Well I mean, actually, for twenty nine ninety nine, this is a really solid piece of equipment, isn't uh, it? I am say, going to rewind all of my balls of wool. I have done that to mine. That was the first thing I did when mm. I got mine home. Um, but the Knit Pro is much... And, Just and so that you can knit from the pretty good one I got, but it was... Yeah, the this, is, no, this is good. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why I did look around, because I wanted to be able to offer two, you know, the high-end, beautiful wooden one, but also a more economical version. Okay. But I didn't want it to be rubbish that, you know, people get it, and in two weeks go, it's broken. Absolutely not. And Wendy's been overusing this quite a lot, actually. That's so lovely, and look at it with the Swift. I just, I just it's going super fast. Yeah, and because, as I say, because I've managed to get the right end of the of the hank, mm. it's just yeah. unraveling, and it's just amazing. I just love it. And then all we do, so we've got a nice message across the bottom. Oh, excuse me. My mother bought her Nipro wool winder in the late 1960s or early 70s. It still works fine today, and I use it regularly. That's amazing. Honestly, they are incredible. And then all you do, you were to finish, then you just insert the wool. You just tuck it under the outside strand because we're not going to be touching that. And then you pull that centre one up and then just lift it off. So you want to be pushing it from the bottom. Just lift it off to a little cake. Beautiful. I just and then, so the one that you, the big cakes you've got there, is that a ones. whole ball? That is a 100-gram ball. 100-gram ball. 100-gram ball, that is. It looks so lovely, though, doesn't it? Honestly. <laughs> it just looks lovely. I mean, I have mine in the garage in, in, in like, plastic boxes, mm. all in cakes. But how yeah. incredible would it be to have, like, all the different Well, colours? all my yarn sits in baskets, but I'd have it on shelves if I, I'd if have I caked to, well, it. Well, I haven't got enough room in my room, but um, I just think that... It's, it would look so sweet with them all. But as I say, people would say, well, why do you need to have cakes? It just makes life so much simpler. And there will be people nodding going, yeah, we've okay. lost it across the, the floor. So I'm just going to recap the products. Can you wind one of the balls? Which one? Oh, yes, I, I don't know, the green one. The green, the green one. one. I would do the green one. While we're doing one. that. And then oh, we can, then, oh, let's see how far eh? she can wind, oh, wind the ball. Under pressure. So, the, well, the wooden one. Right, so I'm just going to just recap because we've been chatting and probably oh, forgotten what we're supposed to be doing. The first, well, I'm going to start off with the wool winder that Wendy is using at the moment. We're going to challenge her and see how far she can do a whole ball of wool. Um, so this is twenty nine ninety nine, and it will wind um, your lighter weight, like a sort of a lace weight, a four ply, sport weight, double knit. You can have a go with chunky. Will it work with Chunky? Have you tried that? I haven't tried Chunky. I, I, I've tried Aaron. Right. 
So will it work with Aaron? Um, yes, it works. Okay, so it worked with Double Knit and Aaron, um, which is pretty much the you know the basic ones that you use. And and you know the the bone. Well, as you we know, I'm talking to Wendy that it just means your balls don't. Um, roll across the floor you don't get that knot and you know how when you knit either from the inside or the outside it all sort of collapses in the end it's great for that if you've got to wind small balls because you're doing fair isle intarsia or anything like that and you need the smaller um, balls brilliant for that and it just looks it just looks really nice I think it's because I'm a lefty. <laughs> so um, Wendy's, yeah, Wendy's the one she's doing at the moment she's winding it from an actual ball Yes, I am. Which is why it's going to, it's, rather it's, than a yes, hank. Yeah, rather, it's, it's much better to wind from a but hank. But it's nicer to wind from, but if you're yeah. winding from balls. So this is it's just one of those pieces of equipment. I love the fact that there's, it's not a plug-in or anything. So there's nothing can go wrong with it. It's just purely mechanical. You just wind it. And I love the way it twists. And it's great because it stays in the box as it's well. It's pretty mesmerizing, And you can see, because you saw Wendy wind it, you just get this beautiful cake. It's like going to a wool shop. And the fact that you can knit from the inside, and it is a, a one-off purchase, really. Yes, that, you, you know, look after them. That yeah. you will have this yeah. forever. And I think it's kind of part of the process. You know, when you've ordered yarn, you bought yarn, it comes home, and then you wind it all to start with. And, it, and honestly, any of you out there who knit or crochet will know exactly what I'm talking about, about it all rolling over the floor, getting dirty. And mm. also, the, you, you, sometimes you think, well, I'm going to start knitting from the inside. And with some yarn, you can get the inner, but, well, but not lucky, all of them. If, if you're, you're lucky, lucky, I would say nine times out of ten, no. You can't. And you end mm. up, you pull it out, and it's just this big knot. Yeah. So, and, and with when you need to wind smaller balls as well, it's useful because then you can see what you're doing. It's just, it's just sometimes easier. So this one is $29.99. The mo more luxurious one, which, which does the same thing, but you can use it with much heavier weight. So anything from sort of chunky or above or even string if you need to. Um, so there's more people that have this in baskets than we've actually got. I mean, and you've seen Wendy demonstrate it. It is beautiful and it's made from natural beech wood. And it is, it's just a purely a mechanical mechanism. There's no electricity or power that needs to go into it. She's finished. She's finished in that time. So how long was that? Five minutes? It would have been even quicker, but because <laughs> because I'm working, it's, it's unorthodox how we've got it set up. Right. So at home, I would just have it rolling around. I, I actually put a cardboard box on the floor to stop okay. it getting dirty. So I have a massive cardboard box with the ball in. And then you, you need to kind of hold it to create the tension for it. Mm. Whereas when this goes from this to this, yes. the tension's already there for you. Um, if you've got a ball bouncing yeah. around. So it's, winding from a swift, easy peasy. That, yes, that's really easy. But when you wind it um, by hand, you just need to let it go but through your fingers. But look at that. That just that looks... looks amazing. And don't be tempted to, to pull it and wind it too tight because the whole point of a cake is that you just take that yeah. centre and it comes out. If you've wound it really tight to start off mm. with, then it's going to be a lot tighter in the middle and it's going to be harder to come out. But that is, I mean... That, that, yeah, that and honestly, so I know that any I'm of sorry. you out there who knit and crochet will know how satisfying... That is very satisfying. How satisfying <laughs> that is. I just think it's, it's less wastage as well because you do waste a lot of yarn that all gets tangled around each other when you've got them all in a basket and you lose bits you do. don't you Whereas well with the you cakes you can just tuck the end in that you when you finished yeah but then uh, you can just tuck the end in and then that's not going to be touching anything or going anywhere then you can just stack them up the one mm. thing also i would say that sometimes um i will just tell you that as you're working as you're getting close to the end sometimes the cake just you know will collapse rewind it that's just what i do and then you just have a little baby you cake little baby so you had a big cake and then you have a baby and that's one. quite nice because you can easily see then what you've got left and what there mm. is and you can just you can have a, a brilliant sort and out day they're much easier to weigh as a cake yeah to weigh the ball of wool they don't sit on the scales and that whereas you just put that on the scale and you know how much you've got what a lovely day that's a great rainy uh, day isn't it uh, go through yeah. your whole yarns order one of these either the very lovely believe me i have one, done it every one. single one of my really. balls of wool i really i really want to i'm going home I'm taking this one's coming with me. And I'm well, gonna, if you're taking that one, I'm taking I'm gonna, that one. <laughs> I will fight over the swift. <laughs> yeah. So a quarter of the stock of the wool winder, which is the twenty nine ninety nine one, has already gone, and there's loads of you with it in baskets. So if you do want this one, and with the beautiful beechwood one, there are more people in baskets 
than we've actually got so you do need to check out on this but this really is you know a one-off purchase and yes you do only need some yarn and needles or hook to crochet and knit with but this is just one of those pieces of equipment that it will make quite a big difference it's a and game it is, changer. It's it, an it, absolute it is. game changer. Well, the, the yeah. message we had earlier said that this is it. And it really is. And I can just see why I'm going home. That's it. I'm but, going home. you know, if you, as I say, if you do crochet and knit, you know. You just know that trying to find the centre of that ball. So I'll, I, I've got one here. And I'm, this is just literally live me doing it. So because normally it's much easier to come from out the centre. So. Okay. Oh, that's not going to happen. It's not going it? to happen. No. So um, to do it that way is going to be so much And easier. having a swift makes quite a difference, doesn't it? Because there is, it's strange, isn't it, how there is more yarn now sold in hanks than there yes. ever used to be. Yeah. Is it because there's more people natural dyeing? Or? I think so, yes. There are more, like, if you say cottage industries, mm. um, and you can get some incredible, incredible yarns. It's just crazy. Well, we've got some lovely ones here, and then we've got, you know, these are from Twink Knits and... Woolly Chic, who have been on um, Yarn Lane several times, and you know, you've met them, you know how they do them. So, Nicola from Twink Knit, she hand dyes all of her own yarn, and Helen from Woolly Chic, she's created this yarn specially, and they do them in hanks. They sell them in hanks, so that's why. So, we do need. Oh, I'm going to have a go. This is my Swift. Yeah, that's your one you had. But I wouldn't let you. I wouldn't this let is you mine. Earlier but because... it is lovely, isn't it? I just love the yeah. way it because it all, it's all natural beech wood, and the ends of it are just tied together with string. Uh, but that's obviously so that you it. If, if like when you put an umbrella up they're rigid so you literally get the umbrella it's either up or it's down with that one it can be a multitude of positions so you can either have a small hank or a big hank so it's it's just amazing just fantastic yeah I wouldn't go all the way Clap up because the to in Devon yeah, says that, that's probably where the swift is a game yeah, changer it is it is a game changer don't just buy cheap plastic ones Mine was so floppy, I junked it. Oh. Yeah. I mean, my, my, I've always been taught in life that you buy once. Yeah, but and then I, that's you it. Know, I, I do appreciate that it is a considerable purchase, but I've only had it for, well, I've had it a few weeks. Well, I, I, I mean, I, you know, when I looked at all the different ones you could buy, because one of the things, I mean, I've, I knitted from a hank once, never again, mm. and that's why I wound them myself. Mm. And then I looked at the Swifts, and I didn't want to buy a cheap one, because I, don't, I know that you'll all complain. Everyone will it's buy really, them and say really like it's hard to show the quality though. It's it's just it is, isn't it? But it is. I love it. I absolutely. But love I it. I made sure that we. Well, I asked quite a few people because luckily now I speak to lots of different people in the industry and I asked them. I said, which one do you use? Who do you buy them from? Before we bought all the knitting needles and crochet hooks, what do you use? So, this was the one thing that was recommended. But it looks a bit, it looks sort of intimidating, doesn't it? Like, it's ooh. not at intimidating at all. So when you first get it like you have there. It's just um, a beautiful piece of engineering. It is. Set it up, but then have it down. Have it down to start off with. Yeah, and, and, you, and it stores nicely in its box. Offer your hank to it first to see how, right. how much you need to put it up. And in the hank, in the, in the, hank, in the box are the instructions, the instructions are which there. aren't that big because it's not that complicated. It isn't complicated. It's, it may be a bit tricky to get the hank on mm. if you, for the first time you've yeah. ever done one, but once you've done it, couple of times you'll it's be great well isn't it and I had to look around at the different prices that they come in you know because we obviously buy it at a set price I had to look to see what the different price this is very competitive there it were is. quite a few that were more expensive than this so do have a look around but this is this is a, a good price but it's just one of those things this is your investment piece you it's will ingenious. keep it forever I'm just taken by and it, it makes you look really professional it does, doesn't oh, it yeah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> And these things are important. It, it's very these important. These things are very important. I'm now surrounded by Swift. But it just sort of, it take, it's taking your work to the next level, it isn't is. it? it? You is. know, it, I, obviously it is a hobby. It's not a career. This is a, hob a hobby for a lot of people. But, you know, why not? The time that you spend, you often sort of think, oh, I don't know whether I should have that. But the time you spend. But I mean, you, have to, you have to make it into a workable ball or a cake. Yeah. Somehow, and well, you you do you either have the the, the you know. The so it is going to save you a it lot, will save loads, you loads and time. loads of times. Loads and loads of times. And then you know you think how many times you use it and how much it then costs per project. I always think that when you I buy always it. do that. I always mm. break it down. I think well, I've used it once, so it's cost me X amount. Yeah. I've used it twice and half it, and yeah. So I promise mm. you that the amount of time that it takes you to wind it, rather than. 
like this. And I think a lot of people sometimes money. look at Hanks and think, oh, oh, no, I don't want to hang. I, I love mm. one. They, they do. They look lovely. Yeah. But mm. I, can't, I can't knit with one of those. No, so I, I don't know what to do. Well, this is your answer. Definitely. This is your answer. Definitely. I just love it. But very simple. Anyway, we do have a few of them left. So if you want one of the Swifts, pop it in your basket and check out so that you have one because it is lovely. Right, so half of the stock of the wool winder has now gone. <gasps> I'm not surprised. Because it is so lovely. It is, it's so lovely. It is so lovely. It is. It's like, it's just, there's not a lot of equipment really for knitters, is there? It's no. not like sewing machine. Well, no. I suppose there are knitting machines, but we don't have the same equipment. No. No, so you don't actually okay. need much equipment, but as mm. I say, these, these are game changers in the world of, of like the cakes. It's just brilliant. So if you want to buy um, hanks of yarn, we've got lots of them. I've got them all on my desk. I feel like a wool shop today. It's wonderful. <laughs> so if you go onto the website and click on um, yarn, funnily enough. <laughs> oh, actually, no, you can just go on what's because it's all been loaded on there. If you click on what's live, watch live. There are all the singular hanks. There's pictures of three of them, but that's just how they've been photographed. So the, the hanks are 100 gram hanks. Let me show you one of them. Well, I will when you finish that. And then we've got also the same yarn, the, 20, the 100 gram hanks that this is for, um, heart spun yarn from Helen from Woolly Chic. And she's rewound them using her Swift mm. and her ball winder into smaller mm. 25 gram balls. So if you want to buy them as 25 grams rather than 100, you can. There's loads and loads and loads of, of different ones. Where's my piece? Yeah, and these, I mean, you know, any of anyone who follows us on Yarn Lane will have seen Woolly Chic and Twink Knits on before, who these are from. So this beautiful yarn um, from Woolly Chic, it's lovely. It's 70% Blue Face Leicester. This is um, the Heartspun yarn in pink. It's 70% Blue Face Leicester, and you've probably heard me talk about this, which is a sheep with a particularly bluish face. But it has a very, very soft feel, like a merino. It's that f feel to it. But it's also 30% tensile, which makes it perfect for socks. So for a lot of you, tensile is made from the eucalyptus trees, completely na natural. If some people who, you know, you need the extra strength, particularly if you're knitting socks or shawls or things, don't want the nylon in it, which a lot of the sock or the four-ply yarn has got. They want something more natural. This has been developed by H Helen from Woolly Chic, her heart spun yarn. And it's that beautiful combination of the blue face Lester with the tensile that makes it soft. But it also gives it a real sheen. So this is what it looks like as um, the 100 gram hank, which you wind using your swift and your ball winder. But you can also, we've got this in loads and loads of different colours, but you can also, if you just want a little bit, you just want 25 grams, I'll just take the label off very carefully, but Helen winds these herself. And that's what they look like, because you can see the one that Wendy's done. Um, 25 grams is enough for about a sock. So you just need two balls of this for two socks. Or if you've already got some yarn, you can have different colours and you can have different coloured cuffs and toes. So that's it. You can either get it as the 25 gram or the 100 gram. There's lots of different colours. We've got um, forest green, scarlet red. We've got purple, denim blue. Ooh, let me get all the colours. I've got loads of them here. We've got fern green and natural. So have a flick through on the website. So for 100 grams of the woolly sheet yarn is 21.99. The natural one is slightly cheaper because it's not dyed. Just so you know, that's the natural one. Um, if you would, if you're interested in hand dyed yarn, I've also got these from Twink Knits. These are gorgeous. So Nicola buys all this yarn as just natural, and then she dyes it herself, and somehow she comes up with these amazing colours. Now the Honey Bee one, if you look on the website, you see we had this on air a month or so ago, and it sold out very quickly. Um, have I got the shawl now? I haven't got the shawl knitted in that one. But this was really, really popular. The Honey Bee is really popular. That's four ply. Um, I would say the next one was probably ooh, Cottage Garden, which I've got somewhere. So that's we've got a mixture, which is lovely, between double knit and four ply. Now, we have got two brand new colours today that I've just had from... Um, 
Nicola that we haven't had before. Yes, I've got it left in the thing there. Yes, so we've got vintage floral. Look at that. It's all sort of like peppermint green and raspberry and blue. That one's brand new. And Sherbet Fizz is the other brand new one. Which, yes, and I can't find Sherbet Fizz. Oh, it must be there somewhere. It'll be there. It'll be there under, underneath something else. Oh, vintage floral is... Oh, I haven't got the code on here. But they're both on the website. So that's, there's Sherbet Fizz. And then we've got... Vin Those are the two brand new ones. But this... Let me just show you what they look like. This is... Um, this is Cottage Garden. So... Where I had to cottage. There's cottage garden. That's the yarn, and this is what it looks like when it's knitted. Beautiful, isn't it? These are some of the shawls. That's the lichen one, and that's the lichen yarn. It's funny, isn't it, how it comes out when it's different? So if you'd like some the heart spun yarn, which is this beautiful blue face Lester and tensile, or the um, Nicola's Twink Knits hand dye jump. It's all on the website. Just have a look. If you scroll down below Watch Live, you'll see all of it. Right. Let's talk about pom poms. <laughs> pom 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 poms. Pom 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 poms. So yes. we've got now. When you've got now you've wound all your balls of yarn, yes. you can make pom poms. Now yes. I really wanted to put these on the show because a lot of people don't realise that you don't have to use two um, two pieces of cardboard. Two pieces of cardboard like in the old days. Or in the old days, I. I had these where you have you never seen these? Yeah, they're just okay. like they were you'd put them together and then they'd pop apart. So show us um these show are us amazing. what it looks like so, a pom pom when it's finished, because we've only got about five minutes and then you can show us how it works. Right. I love that. That's so cool, isn't it? These That's are for hats, so aren't they? Put them on your hat. And that end of your just, scarf. Yes, end of your scarf, round your cushion. Oh, you can put pom poms anywhere. That one I used a um, indigo and violet kind of colours and it's given a mottled effect. This one here I used um, strands of red and white and then I intertwined so I did ribbon at the same time so that has ribbing in it rib ribbon ribbon, ribbon in wow it. this one is exactly the same it's a little bit harder to see but when you feel it you can feel it's all crunchy and scrunchy because it's got ribbon going through it this one was completely from ribbon so you know like when you get presents and you get all those little bits of ribbon just yes. keep them and then you can make pom-poms out wow. of them wow um, the only thing I would say with pom-poms, if you're going to do that, then use a, say, the same ribbon either side so you get an even effect. But if okay. you don't want to, you don't have and to. And we have got lots of different sizes. Extra small, small, large and extra large. So you yep. can choose between a three quarter of an inch diameter all the way up to a four and a half inch diameter. Now you will notice that mine are different to yours. They are clover. I have had mine years mm. and I mean years there's nothing different about them other that they've now for some reason changed the outer to be cream and the inner to be the color that is the only difference on them everything else is exactly the same so and this is the extra large one that's just on the screen at the moment so that makes four and a half inch mm. ones massive you can make look they've got like little massive. trees then the next Amazing. size down is the um the large one so that makes two and a half inch diameter and three and three eighths inch diameter. Depends what you want to do. The small one makes one and five eighths inch diameter and one and three eighths inch. So you get two. The extra large is just one, but the large, the ex, the small and the extra small, you get two. And then the extra small is just three quarter of an inch and one inch. Helen did a shawl for us where she had the tiny mm. pom poms all the way around the, the little, The little snake that a couple of weeks ago had, yes. had the little pom pom on his so, hat. But, but here, so you've got like the snake that with, and he was made with different colored pom poms, or you can put it into like bunting. I love that. I just that. think that's, that's gorgeous. gorgeous. And all I've done it? is threaded string through them. Did you want, have we got time just to quickly yes. show how We've got them. four minutes. Four minutes. That's not an issue. So you'll find that when you get it, it will come together because I can see them in the packets together. Yes, so all joined together. Pull them apart, and then you have two sides. Okay. Which so one have you got there? The small. Yes, I've got the small. So you want them together, and you'll see that they've got arms either side. So you just want to line the arms up on one side, and you want to get your yarn. Now, what I'm going to do for speed then is I'm just going to do two two strands together okay you don't oh. have to just do one you can do two strands together so you can have a multicolor you can one. have a multicolor so that's what i'm going to do and then all we do is we lay the yarn over the um, the arms and just start winding 
And as soon as you've trapped that first piece, then just cut it off and get it out of the way. And then all we do is we start winding. Now to wind a nice even pom, you want to go from right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right. So I naturally, being a lefty, go from left to right. So you'd probably, Rebecca, go from right to left. Yes, probably. So, <laughs> probably. And then all you do is you want to wind left to right, right to left, until you get what resembles like a satsuma segment. Right. So you've just got a little bit of, it just doesn't quite reach the top. Right, so you, you definitely do don't not go over want the to top. overload these. Right, okay. So when you've done that, then we just close the unit up and we cut that end off. And then we do exactly the same the other side. Now, on my blog, I've got how to make hedgehogs and a, a spider and things like that. And um, I do tell you how many times to wind it round. And you'll, you'll find that, that if you are making something specific, they will tell you how many times to do that. But for this one, I'm just winding right to left, left to right. I'm not even counting to check they're both. When oh, you even. think of the difference between this and those cardboard oh, circles. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and do you remember when you did the cardboard ones? In the end, the hole would be so small, you'd really struggle. You'd yeah, have to, you couldn't to even get it through. through. And then you just close that one up. And then um, all you need to do is you need to cut through the little groove. Now, you do need a really, really sharp pair of scissors, so this is not something that I would we say. We do so well, we've got a minute left. Little Look at that. Look do. how quickly Wendy's made this problem. Right, and then all you do, and this is another thing that I would suggest, is that if you can buy um, a cotton yarn, mm. and then, um, you want, because that will make it much, much stronger when you tie it, and then you just put it in that groove, and then you pull really tight. Now, if that was acrylic, that would have snapped by yeah. now. So then we just do a double knot, and what you can do is go under and do a double knot again, but we're not going to get time. And then all you do is just make sure that you open the arms out first, and then you just tease them off. Oh, my Lord, look at that. Them. Wendy's made a pom pom. And then in I would three give it a minutes. haircut. I'd give it a haircut. That's brilliant. Thank you so You're much, Wendy. Welcome. We're going to have to have you back to do oh. pom poms oh, and yes. show us more about it. So if you, hopefully you've been inspired and really learned something today. I know that I have and want to just run home and wind all my balls of yarn. Everything that we have on air today is on the website. Um, yarn Lane will be back on Friday. So we will see you then. And thank you for joining us today. It's been such fun.